G'day, I'm Jason Edwards. Welcome to Snap Happy, the photography show. And I'm Maddie Claire Sloan. Maddie, you've been up early this week. I was, I met up with Ken Duncan and we went to Terrigal on the New South Wales Central Coast to shoot this panoramic photo. And it's a really nice image. Now, you also got a tour of Ken's gallery, I believe. I did and it was worth a visit. Let's go check it out now. So here we are at Terrigal, uh, at the Skillion. It's always good to get there very early for a sunrise so you're not panicking. So you've got plenty of time to watch it come, come in. So we're definitely here early, just waiting for the light to get right. The weather, we're not exactly sure. At least we can see the sun out there. We, we can see some windows, so it looks like it could be good. But the bottom line with any uh, sunrise for Toby, just get out of bed, get out there and go, because you'll never know what's going to happen unless you're there. So no sleeping in. Wow, that's a beautiful, wow. Look at so we're sitting here, a lot of people would just look at the sunrise, but you need more than just a sunrise, you need some foreground interest. What happens with the sunrise, you see the big colour there, then it goes off to the left and right, if it's a good one, which we got this morning. And so we're looking at this scene with a bit of colour. But now I'm waiting for a wave, so it's all about when you're doing seascapes especially, often it's very important, the wave action, to create some drama and movement in the shot. So it's waiting for all of those things to come together and that's where it's often fun just watching all the elements come together and then there's that decisive moment, click, and away you go. That's the theory. <laughs> but it's fun. And then check your histogram to make sure you've got all your information. Coming from a film background, and I still shoot film because I love film as well as digital, you tend to think about what you're shooting and that's one of the problems with digital photography now is people are just shooting their heads off thinking they'll get the decisive moment. So you need to put in more thought when you're actually taking the photos and allow the things to start to reveal themselves to you. Wait for that moment. Less shots, but get good ones. So Ken, you've become a household name when it comes to your amazing panoramic landscape photography. How did you get started? I didn't like schoolwork, so, <laughs> so uh, look, I just um, had a passion for photography from the age of 16, oh, and wow. as soon as I found out about cameras, that was the end of my schoolwork, <laughs> I realised there had to be a way to make money out of photographing what you want, Yeah. because you know, before that I was shooting cars, bras and handlebars and commercial <laughs> stuff, and it was just like, you know, so I started doing landscape and I found about the panoramic format and I just fell in love with that so that's how it all started. And what was your first camera? My dad used to take forever to take family photos and I thought if I'm ever going to grow up yeah. I, I'm going to need to take over. So I'd go and give me the camera dad so I, it was a Practica. Practica? And then my first camera I had was a, a Nikon and I must admit when I had my first camera I actually took it to bed with me, I polished <laughs> it. I don't know. There's nothing weird, but I was so stoked at my first camera. No, you would be. Yeah. What would be the perfect landscape shot for you? Well, I'm still looking for that perfect yeah. one. <laughs> so You've got a few. The key is to try and humble yourself before what's happening. Um, for me, I'm an average photographer with a great God, and that's not... Just, you've got to go there and, and begin to experience it, feel it, and yeah. allow it to wash over you. It's hard for me not to believe in a creator. Now, I wasn't always that way. I've been all through all sorts of things. But on my journey, when you, you're forced to look at nature, as a photographer, you're forced to look at it and look back on it. And so after a while, I thought, this can't happen by chance. And a lot of people have problems with this because we're always brought up to be in control, the feeling of control. Well, you know, we're travelling on a planet at 108,000 kilometres per hour, hurtling through space. So if you really think you're in control, <laughs> yeah. good luck with that one, you know. <laughs> so. so Ken, you're a Lumix ambassador. Tell us about that. What I love about Lumix is they make life simple for people. Yeah. And it's not about the technology. It just becomes about having fun. Yep. And sometimes people with photography, they make it so difficult. It's all about f-stops. and Because yep. yep. it's more about the moment than the technicality. So 
that's why I like them. And yeah, so I always carry. I always carry one too. So we've got a matching one. I know. <laughs> we'll bring it out yeah. later. <laughs> when you spend as much time on the road as I do and carry as much as I do, you want to be comfortable, but also know that your gear is well protected. That's why I've been using the Low Pro Pro Trekker for more than 20 years in all types of habitats and on every continent. The last thing you want to happen when you go hiking is to leave something behind. The thing I love about the Low Pro Pro Trekker is that I can also take a tripod and a laptop, a necessity in today's digital age. The Low Pro Pro Trekker doesn't look large on the outside, but has enormous carrying capacity on the inside. The thing I love the most is that it's big enough to carry some big glass. So here I've got a 400mm lens, I've got two camera bodies, one, two, three other lenses, I've got a panoramic camera, wireless strobe control and another strobe. In addition to that I have an enormous amount of pockets to carry things like batteries, spare memory cards and cleaning equipment. So everything that I need for a field hike is here with me. A bag that carries a lot of equipment but destroys your back on the first day is next to useless. Fortunately, the Pro Trekker has some great features to keep you comfortable and on track. The great thing about the Low Pro Trekker is it has an active lift system that transfers the weight from your lower back to your hips, therefore making it so much more comfortable. And another thing is the backpack has heavily padded straps with lots of micro adjustments, so you can really set it up to suit your personal needs. It also has a fantastic facility to house a two litre reservoir of water to keep you hydrated whilst you're hiking. When the weather takes a turn for the worse, the all weather cover built into the base of the bag is great peace of mind. For my kind of work, the Low Pro Pro Trekker is the ultimate field bag for comfort and functionality, and I reckon I'll be using it for the next 20 years. Today we're here at Sydney's northern beaches in Narrabeen. We're about to meet an entrepreneur who's combined her skills in photography with a new passion. So let's go meet her and find out more. I went to um, Brazil in 2006 with a girlfriend of mine and yeah when I came back from Brazil I guess I'd always had a passion for swimwear because I was always in my swimsuit growing up by the beach and then I just decided to start designing my own range. Um, I did a really small range that was made here in Australia and sold to friends and family and it sold really well so yeah that's how it all started. Beautiful now where did you get the inspiration when you were there? Was it the colour? Was it the people? The women there are so confident and they you know they spend all day in their swimsuit and I just thought bring that back to Australia and do really bright colourful swimwear here. How have your designs changed over time? Or have you gone for the more confident woman or is it everyone? Yeah, I think it's kind of uh, stayed the same in that I've always made it really fun and really feminine and so I've always included florals and bright colours. Beautiful. Yeah, nothing too serious or edgy, it's just fun and colourful, yeah. And you started as a photographer, is that right? Yes. So I did. how do we mix both of those passions? Yeah, I've always worked in photography. I've done portrait photography, a bit of fashion and now a lot of wedding photography. Now do you shoot your own catalogues as well? Or? I do, yeah. Um, all apart from two, I think. I've shot every campaign that I've done, so I guess about, yeah, seven campaigns campaigns now uh, and any social media things that yeah. I do as well. Now you're from the northern beaches so do you have a favourite spot to shoot? Not as far as a beach in particular yeah. but I love just shooting outdoors and at the beach I just love clean backgrounds, um, not too much going on behind them because I want their swimwear obviously to be the feature and the standout. From Sol Bellow swimwear line I'm wearing the Lucy Crochet one piece with gorgeous lightweight kimono. Sophie took me down to her local beach in Narrabeen to introduce me to one of her favourite spots to shoot her swimwear line. Now it's a little bit windy. How's this going to go? <laughs> it is. We'll just have to work with the wind, I think. That's the thing with uh, shooting outside. I guess yeah. you've got to work with the wind and the weather and the rain if it it's comes. A, it's a little bit cold too, isn't it? It is. <laughs> We've got a few tricks for that. <laughs> OK. Well, let's go take a look then. OK. Yeah. Braving the wind and cool weather, we stepped down to the water's edge to take some shots. So you mentioned that you shoot in winter, is that so? It is. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah the timing of when you design the range and need to shoot it is always yeah. in autumn, winter. So nice we're always cold. shooting in the cold, <laughs> nice in and the wind. <laughs> yeah, so the poor girls in the swimwear, but yeah. you 
need to make it work. So Do there's bring heaters and jumpers and stuff. We have done the heater once before, yes, the portable heater. But yeah, it's mostly just tricks with the light, I yeah. guess. Um, using reflectors with the gold side yeah. can be really handy in the sun to give that warm, glowy look. Obviously, makeup. Yeah. And then shooting at this time of day in the golden hour is also really great um, to get that sunny, yeah. warm look when it's not. Now, what is the golden hour for those who don't know? Yeah, so the golden hour, I guess, is this time of day when yeah. the sun's setting and you just get that really, really beautiful warm glow on your skin. Yeah. Um, it's a really nice time to shoot, but it does go really quickly. So the sun sets quite quickly and you've sort of got limited time mm. to get that look. So do you have about two hours or is it? Um, yeah, so mm. it's different when it gets right right down low. It's actually a different look because you haven't got any sun on you, but yeah. it's a really beautiful golden light. Uh, so yeah, that, that part of it goes quite quickly. You can sort of have 20 minutes of that oh, and wow. then the sun's So you really gone. have to shoot quite quickly? That's it, yeah. Oh goodness. Have most of your shoots been around this time of the day? Um, well, not really. We have to shoot all day long. Yeah. So there's some, some shots in the campaign that will be that real yeah. sunny look, um, but you do have to kind of work with the, hot, the weather yeah. throughout the day and the sun and positions. So the look can change, um, but those golden hour shots are always my favourite. Just 10 minutes down the road from Terrigal Beach, we find ourselves at the Ken Duncan Gallery. Now it's located in this beautifully landscaped garden and it's one of the largest privately owned photographic galleries in Australia. So Ken, we're in your gallery, what can we find here? Lots of photos. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and look, the whole idea of this is to show people what you can do with photography and to inspire them to do something with their own work. Yep. A photo is not a photo until it's printed. Yep. Because that's when you really see what you've got. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of people fall down with their iPhones. You know, it's looking great for social media, yep. but as soon as you blow it up like this, you'll, yep. you'll realise how low level that is. So Ken, there's such amazing photos in here. How do you pick what goes in the gallery? We actually have a selection committee okay. that actually look at the pictures. Yep. Uh, women need to be very much involved because yep. anybody when it comes to living in a house will realise that women generally make the decisions <laughs> of what goes on the they wall. Yeah. <laughs> and men may get one little area in their yep. <laughs> office or something mm -hmm. like that. So it's very important to have women in part of the selection committee and also a cross section so that's how we decide and ultimately then we put them up and we'll soon see if it's a winner or not. Is it an amazing feeling when it does go up on the wall? Look to me that's the yeah. only time you really see a picture when you yeah. when you finally present it and this is why I'm so sad because there's very little of that happening now. At a time when there's never been more photos taken yeah. very little has been done with them so I'm trying to really educate them now to do something because if we don't do prints, yeah. one day there'll be no record. If it's just a digital storage, it'll be gone. Of course. Now looking around at all these amazing photos, there's photos in Africa, in China, in the middle of nowhere in Australia. Now do you have a favourite place that you've shot? Well that's a constant question yeah. that's asked, what's your favourite place? Yeah. My favourite place is the next one. <laughs> so, yeah. like, But you know, I love Central Australia, yeah. I mean I love Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, but. There's lots of places, you know, and yeah. each has a different emotion. But I just love the whole of our planet. Yeah. So, and it's a big one, isn't it? <laughs> There's so much to do, you know, gosh. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at some of my favourite photos, shall we? Tell us about this one. Well, this is King George Falls up in the Kimberleys. And I started this love affair with this waterfall back in 1982 when we first found it uh, in a chopper, went in there. And I realised, I needed to shoot it at sunrise or before sunrise to get the beautiful light. So over the years I tried different lights and finally it was just a couple of years ago um, we went in and camped out there and were able to get this amazing sunrise colour. So now that we've got that I think a lot of people are probably going to want to <laughs> try and get yeah, up there. and try and replicate the photo. Ken, we're looking at the eyes of Africa. Tell me about this one. Well, this is uh, shooting on large format, on 80 megapixels, and uh, it's quite difficult because you have manual focusing, and, and yeah. I had to get a special lens for this one, 500 millimeter. So when I first started shooting wildlife, it was so frustrating because I'd missed so many shots. But it was finally when I got this particular shot 
that I realized it's really worthwhile persevering mm -hmm. because the detail is so sharp. When you actually go into the eyes, it's like you could do an iridology yeah. lesson. So, and the sharpness just really helps connect you to the moment. The reason I used a longer lens is I've been using wide angle lenses a lot with elephants and rhinos and ended up getting chased by, <laughs> charged by an elephant, chased by a rhino. And after that I thought, man, I've got to get yeah, me a no. telephoto lens. <laughs> the Ken Duncan Gallery is open seven days a week and entry is free. So if you're on the New South Wales Central Coast, make sure you pop in and see it for yourself. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Hi, I'm Wolfgang Glowacki, and this is what's in my kit. My 70 to 200 2.8 lens, which I use mainly for almost wildlife or um, telephoto kind of photos. I also have um, my trusty 100mm macro lens, which is what I use for doing most of my macro work with. I have my 17mm tilt shift, which I use primarily for forest or other landscapes where I need to get my verticals looking straight, so at a wide angle but with straight verticals in it. I carry a couple of different flashes, just my normal 430EX flash. I also just have a handful of cleaning bits and pieces, so a blower brush, which is always handy. I also use a range of um, ND neutral density and gradual neutral density filters in the field as well to help keep the skies in check and also handy when you're shooting waterfalls and slow moving objects. I also have my self timer for doing um, time lapses and um, holding still um, bits and pieces with that. My favourite piece of my kit is my 24mm 1.4 lens, basically because it makes a great wide angle lens, but it also can be used um, at 1.4 as a wide angle macro lens, so it's a very diverse lens. And when I go away in the wilderness, um, it's usually the one I take with me. I'm Wolfgang Glowacki, and that's what's in my kit. Last week, we visited the Mindel Markets in Darwin. While we were there, we met a photographer who was working on a special project. You've got some great work here. Tell me about what you do. Um, basically, I'm an artist in the park residence currently um, at the Territory Wildlife Park at Berry Springs. Mm. Basically working backstage with the keepers and taking a studio around to all the different areas. It's amazing. Looking at this work, it's all very personal. It's, it's, it's not only close and filling the frames, but there's a lot of emotion in it. Coming from an advertising background and portraiture, trying to stay away from the whole scientific photography mm. is the approach in why it's not full frame of their complete bodies as well as the use of depth of field, so composition as well is a major factor in the whole project. There seems to be a little, little bit of colour in some images and then yep. the black and white. That's yep. a style you've developed yourself? Yeah, it's sort of a, a trait that when I look back through at a lot of different projects that I've done, it's something that is a bit of, it keeps reoccurring through my style. So they're all captured within a studio context. So it is with the, the backdrops and then um, basically I'm layering with the black and white and going back to the original colour of the eyes. Wow, yeah. and I can see this in this fantastic eye. I can see the, just a the little bit of colour coming through there. Do you have a favourite um, type of animal, like a bird, reptile? Do you, do you work They're with? all completely different characters. Um, the Tiwi Marstel is from the Tiwi Islands, so obviously being quite close to Darwin itself mm -hmm. is probably one of my personal favourites. Um, yeah, obviously the birds, but the curlew has the biggest character. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He, he'd go out and he'd plane watch every time he heard. Oh, really? <laughs> heard them flying around, so that was wow. quite funny. So one of the keys with photography, one of the most important things, is you've got to understand that you're looking at a three-dimensional object and you're trying to bring it back in two dimensions. How many of you have taken photos of a really beautiful scene only to come back and say, well, it was a, a lot better than that, then you probably failed creating that third dimension. And sometimes the more spectacular the scene, the more we can make that mistake. So here we are. We've got some waves here, which is pretty good. So we're probably going to use that as our foreground interest. I want to slow it all down. So what I'm going to use is a neutral density filter. Now, I love my little Lumix camera. I call mine ridiculous. I love the Micro Four Thirds because it allows you to have a whole outfit in just a bum bag or something like this. 
often when I'm with photographers, they'll, they'll ask me, what settings should I use? And I say, the question you've got to ask yourself is, what are you trying to achieve? You have three variables that you can deal with. ISO, or the sensitivity that you set for the sensor, or you have aperture, or you have speed. So, is speed a priority? Is it, do you want to actually freeze the wave, or do you want the wave blurred? So you've got to determine what speed. Now, if, if you're after a really slow speed, that means you're going to have to get your ISO down and your aperture up. So that's what you've got to learn. And here we go, here's a good little wave. Oh, there we go, we're getting wet now. I also recently had an opportunity to use a Lumix Micro Four Thirds camera in Kakadu National Park. I was surprised at how great the images were. Look for that story in a couple of weeks' time. And don't forget to join our mailing list at snaphappytv.com for special offers for exclusive content and competitions. See you next week on Snap Happy, the photography show. Photography is always a bit like that Clash song. Should I stay or should I go? You know, you, should I be here, should I be there? And it's sort of like, say, so you've just got to relax and make sure you don't miss the shot. <laughs>